All right, go ahead, Megan. All right, welcome to uh, the third quarter supporter update. And I'm here with Tim Lennon, our Director of Engineering. We'd love to give an update of what's happening at the organization and all the ways that we are serving the community with new programs. Um, and before I begin, this is recorded. Uh, we're going to be, we just, um, we are going to be recording this and sharing this with all supporters who couldn't attend. So we just ask for those uh, that are dialing in just to go on mute. And uh, if you have questions, use the chat window and Tim and I will both be monitoring it. We can stop as we go and answer questions. And if you hear something you like, go ahead and tweet it. Um, you get to hear things first and and then share it out with the world using at Drupal, at Drupal Asos, please, um, and any other Twitter handle you want to use. Um, so today we'll just go over Drupal Association news, what's going on at DrupalCon, and uh, Tim will give an update on Drupal.org. Before we begin, though, I want to give a special thanks to all of the supporters. Uh, your funds go directly to Tim's team and the Drupal.org costs. Um, it's because of you that we're able to host um, our website, create the developer tools, and as you know, it's a really unique system that's designed just to support our community, which is, um, uh, you know, important that we maintain that and keep it working. Um, but we also have some really exciting news of what Tim's doing to make it even better for you. Um, but so first, thanks for all the funding um, in this way. Uh, and of course, all the other things you do for the project. No one recognizes that more than we do. So why don't we go ahead and dive in. Some Drupal Association news that you might have missed is that we've had our annual uh, board elections where the community self-nominates um, and campaigns and then the community votes on the next uh, board member. And we are really excited for Suzanne Durgacheva. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm still working on that. Um, we're really excited that she has been nominated uh, to um, be on the board for the next two years. You might know her. Um, she is co-owner of Evolving Web, and, and she has done lots of training, lots of ways that she's been involved in the community for many, many years. So Suzanne, welcome. We're excited to have you. Also, another supporting partner. Uh, you probably have heard about DrupalCon Seattle. We started putting some messages out there. It's happening in early April of 2019. I wanted just to walk through um, how we are evolving and expanding it this year. Um, in, the, in the past, it's been primarily for builders. So the um, agencies um, who build for clients and the developers who work for them. Um, as well for organizations that are building in-house um, for different organizations. And it's also been for the, the people who are building Drupal.org um, and contributing back to the project. And we've kind of taken a different approach and realized that we really need to focus on growing Drupal adoption. And to do that, we have to serve all the personas in the customer life cycle, everyone that has a decision making aspect within that customer life cycle. And that means we need to be talking with decision makers to get them to choose Drupal. We need to talk with decision makers who have already started using Drupal and get them to keep falling deeper in love with it. Um, so we need that decider track. Um, and we also know that the decisions um, for Drupal are being made in the marketing organization. And the marketing departments are strong influencers uh, for their CMO and whoever's choosing um, their, their CMS. So we wanted to have a track that really brings in organizations um, or marketing departments and the people using Drupal to push out content and help them be power users and see what they can do from the content strategy perspective, governance perspective, taxonomy, learning about how to create a full MarTech stack with Drupal since um, it's API first and that's a strength that we need to really promote to these people. Um, so we are expanding into that persona as well. So you're going to see a lot more different kinds of faces at DrupalCon in Seattle. Of course, we want to keep the builder um, uh, kind of persona and, you know, 
They're our core group, and we want to maintain that always and give them as much value as possible. So uh, you'll, for those that have been coming to DrupalCon year after year, it's going to be the same experience, but we're doing things to level, level up that experience based on feedback that we've received. Um, and I'll go into some details about that. For agency owners, all of you supporting partners out there, we're doing something different. In the past, we've offered the business summit and the business track, but instead we're going to really uh, have more curated content for you. And it's going to be the agency leaders track. It'd be for agency owners, people in your biz dev um, department, sales, marketing. Um, and it's more focused on like training and skills that you would need to be uh, able to really compete in the marketplace uh, for Drupal and for your business. So we're going to have um, um, analysts come in and talk about the um, where Drupal is in the marketplace, where they see Drupal as really being differentiated and how you can really amplify that in your messaging. Um, we want to have a table of CMOs since they are one of the new decision makers out there. We want to have a table where they talk about what keeps them up at night and how they make purchasing decisions. Um, we want to bring in some large um, um, implementers, um, agencies, marketing agencies, and have them talk about some really ambitious blue sky type of solutions that they're doing with Drupal, just to give some new ideas of what you could be doing with clients and, and go back and have other conversations with them. And then, of course, we'll give some training on Promote Drupal and what kind of uh, materials are going to be available for you out of the promote Drupal initiative, whether it's um, competitive tools that you can use or new branding, new messaging, things like that. So um, there will be these different tracks and all the personas will be kind of put in different parts of the convention center because each persona kind of needs its own feel and experience and programming, their own tribe. So we're, we're doing that um, kind of segmentation of personas, but we also know there's power in bringing all these personas together. And so we're gonna have cross-pollination of personas and knowledge sharing in all the ways that you're used to seeing that happen, the hallway track, the keynotes, the social events, the community programming. Um, and so hopefully you'll be able to network and, and make these new, new people wel feel welcome at our event and help them find their on-ramps into the community. So I did talk about how we want to create more value, especially for those that have been coming to DrupalCon year after year. Um, we've done a lot of surveys, we've had lots of roundtables, gotten a lot of feedback from evaluations, and we took all of that and started finding ways to invest in areas that people have been asking for for many years. Um, one was they feel that when we hold trainings and summits on just Monday, they're just forced to choose between trainings or summit, and they find a lot of value in attending more than one. So we've kind of rejuge the programming for the week and uh, created trainings and summits across Monday and Tuesday so you can choose more options. Um, and uh, these industry summits have become really popular. People really want to find their affinity groups that kind of align more with their business focus. Uh, so we've expanded the summits to include other industries such as healthcare and finance. And you'll see others like accessibility, um, library services. Um, so there's gonna be a lot more to choose from. We also know that uh, the community has been wanting more featured speakers and the funds that we could attract featured speakers, especially from those outside of the community. So we're really excited to be working on that now. Um, and we'll have, we'll be announcing um, some of these featured speakers in September when we open up early bird pricing. And uh, we, we hear that it is still a challenge for people to come to DrupalCon, and there's a lot of different types of contributors we would like to see at DrupalCon too. So we're increasing our grants and scholarships, as well as our speaker inclusion fund, um, uh, so that we can get all kinds of people um, to be able to come to DrupalCon, making it kind of lowering that barrier for them. Uh, and we know that everyone lives on coffee. And so we're gonna have all day free coffee in the exhibit hall. And of course that's by design so that we can create value for our sponsors. Um, but those are some things that we're um, adding extra investments into, as well as 
um, bringing in these other personas, a, a, a track focused on just decision makers and a track focused on those marketing influencers, like bringing in those marketing department people. These are additional costs as well as we expand. Um, and we've been wanting to be mindful of how we do this. It does require us to increase our pricing for next year. Um, we want to always create more and more value. We haven't done a, a price increase in several years. And so this is um, something we want to be really transparent about and make sure there's no surprises. We've reached out with many and tested this pricing with you. Um, you know, some of the feedback we got was that, wow, we, we can't believe pricing so low compared to the other conferences we go to. And it's true. If you look at um, one of our big competing conferences is NTC. It's a conference for technologists that work at nonprofits. And NTC costs more than even the new pricing that we have. So we did increase pricing, but we have still tried to remain below our quote unquote competitors out there. Um, and so what you'll see is um, for Early Bird, which is opens um, uh, September 4th, I believe. Um, and uh, you'll see that we have two kinds of pricing. We have the standard conference price, 795, but we want to create more value for our supporters. And so if you're a supporting partner, all of your employees will get a special supporting partner price, which is $200 less. So it would be $5.95. And you're going to get an update when Early Bird goes on sale so that you can start taking advantage of this. And um, of course, you know, with every stage at regular last chance, um, you will continue to get that supporter price. So stay tuned for when that opens up. If you have any questions, please let me know. Another thing that we're working on on the events side is uh, an MVP. We want to start seeing what the Drupal Association can do with supporters to be in front of customers more. And um, on October 25th, we are going to have a one day event just for customers and only for supporting partners customers to come together. Um, it will be a day where we can get customers to network, um, hear aspirational business case studies, so they can learn from each other and the impact Drupal's having in their business. It could foster some great discussion. Um, we want to have some contribution case studies so customers can hear why other businesses are contributing back to the project, how they could do it and why they should do it. Um, what's the business value to them? Um, we'll have a lunch and go out for lunch and um, come back and do breakouts and roundtable discussions. This really comes from some roundtables that we had at DrupalCon Nashville where we brought customers together, Drupal customers together for the first time. And they found lots of value in just being in a room together and asking questions they may not know who to ask. Um, and just it's just good to have peer networking. And so they asked us to do this. Supporters asked us to do this. So we're excited to come up with a real, you know, it's a, a low pressure casual business day where we can bring everyone together. And we're really thankful that Johnson & Johnson is donating the space in New York City. Um, it will be at JJ Design's office. That's their design agency. The room only holds 50 people. Um, I think it's a good size for the first time that we're doing this. I do think it will fill up quickly. And the idea is that um, a supporter would sign up. It would just be one supporter coming. And they can bring up to three customers. We would like it to be director or higher so that the networking is happening at the right level and there's more alignment and, and um, amongst the people that are in the room. Um, we're keeping costs really low. Um, though of course, we need to get the staff out there. This is unbudgeted for us. Um, they'll run this event. Um, we'll need to pay for some catering, printing, you know, keeping the costs low. We want to have a happy hour at the end, so there's some costs associated with that. So we're asking agencies you sign up to do this just to share the cost. It'll be about $1,000. We're still working on the budget, but you know, it'd be about $1,000 per agency. We're not asking for sponsorships. And every, the way this will be built out to the customers um, on the day of is that is being presented by the Drupal Asso Association, all participating uh, supporters. And so all your logos will be on it. 
uh, we think we could have somewhere between about, you know, you know, about 16 supporters and bringing three customers fills up the room, more or less. Um, and uh, right now I've been organizing this with Media Current um, and Lillibot and Commerce Guys will be joining us. We've had some customers from that original round table that I want to help us with programming to make sure this is designed in a way that um, will resonate and create value. Um, so there's a nice little committee around this. So um, we'll be thanking uh, uh, those, those um, members on site, but we're still putting that committee together. Um, so I want to launch this um, around September 4th as well. And that will give agencies an opportunity to sign up um, and about a month to go find some customers. We are hoping you don't have to fly anyone in. We think there's enough customers in the New York metro area that we can invite them in for a day. We want this to keep, stay low cost. Again, it's an MVP. And we can learn a lot from this MVP event. Um, and then after DrupalCon, turn around and see how we can turn this into a road show at major cities in the US and Europe. We could take it to other parts of the world too by working with um, community leaders, for example, maybe in India or China. Uh, I think there's a lot that we can do here. And honestly, my ultimate vision is turning this into a Drupal digital experience and bringing in other technologies or having a very strong, broad, open source focus where Drupal's a part of it. And I think this could be a lot bigger and we can really grow this. Um, so stay tuned on that, um, uh, on that launch. Um, but maybe you want to start thinking of this as something you want to do and um, uh, which customers in the greater New York area you would like to invite to attend. Many of you have heard about our Promote Drupal initiative that Dries announced at DrupalCon Nashville. Um, we know that there needs to be some standardization of messaging, collateral, um, you know, sales tools, um, just very PR, very different initiatives that everyone can just grab and use so that we're more efficient as a business ecosystem. Um, I like to think of, you know, if I were the CEO of Drupal, a software company, how would I get, you know, who's my sales force and how do I enable them to be um, as effective as possible out there and as efficient as possible. And, and of course that sales force are all of you, all the agencies out there promoting Drupal in the marketplace and the services around it. Um, and so we want to really have promote Drupal serve you and help connect you to new business decision makers and just make it easier to like grab tools that are already available. Maybe it's marketing videos that you can display. So you can go out there and, um, and have something that has a really strong tested message. So this is like the, where we are, we've announced recently that it is now live. We have um, some architecture coming together. We're getting ready to launch um, basically an in-kind RFP where we can find someone who will create a brand book for um, Drupal. And then we can start creating some templates with some key messaging. And we wanna make sure we push this out to all the regions and all the countries of the world so that they can translate and even alter the messaging because every region, every country has um, something slightly different um, in what's happening. Um, we, have, we wanna give them the flexibility and autonomy but have consistent messaging and tools. Um, and then they can push that out in country. So that's the general approach that we're taking. Things are starting to happen. And one of the things that we want to do immediately is a press release around Drupal 8.6, which is coming out about a week before Drupal Europe. Um, so I, I believe that is September 3rd that they're aiming for. Um, it is an exciting um, dot release. It is, we're getting much more, um, user-friendly um, features for our content editors with the workflows, workspaces, um, lots of just really exciting things happening here. And so we're working with the project maintainers to make sure we really can articulate the, the new features in a very consumable way. We're writing a press release. Um, I'm looking for customer quotes. If you have customers that can give testimonials without having to go through a big corporate approval, please send them my way. Um, we would like to highlight customer quotes for sure. And then again, we want to um, push this out to country leaders who can translate and push the press release out in country. Um, Promote Drupal is really 
um, mirroring how our technical initiatives work. Yes, there's some leadership at the top, someone who can be a project manager to make sure things are moving, but the power comes from the distributed contributions of everyone working together to move something forward. And so that's what we want to do, starting with this press release. Um, and hopefully we can pull this together in a way that gets highlighted in the Drews note at Drupal Europe. Um, so it's going to start forming some really exciting DNA um, for um, our marketing efforts for Drupal. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I mentioned Drupal Europe a few times. It is coming very quickly because summer for us, winter for some of you, is um, <laughs> coming to a close very quickly. And we will be at Drupal Europe before we know it. Uh, it's September 10 through 14. Uh, the Drupal Association is there in full support. Um, we are having a board retreat the weekend before and a public board meeting Monday the 10th at 11 a.m. local time. So if you're going to Drupal Europe, um, definitely come to our public board meeting. And Rachel Lawson, our community liaison, is organizing roundtables. And one of the roundtables will be for supporting partners to come together. We really want to foster a conversation about what we could be doing more together to accelerate uh, Drupal adoption in Europe um, and hearing other needs that you might have. So please be on the lookout for that invitation. I'm always excited to have these kinds of discussions it informs our roadmap for next year. Okay, well that's it for me. I'm gonna hand it over to you, Tim. Great, um, so I'm gonna give an update on Drupal.org itself, some of the technical side of the work that we've been doing in the past quarter, and some important announcements and things that we wanna make you aware of. Um, we know that a lot of supporting partners are of course involved in maintaining uh, modules for Drupal or in contributing to core and things like that. And we have some exciting news coming up. Um, if you go to the first slide, Megan, uh, I want to give an announcement um, about uh, the Git remotes on Drupal.org and our tooling. So um, there's some changes that are coming that mostly affect maintainers. So they're not going to affect the you know, people out there who are already have maybe automated systems for their deployment process that are cloning down Drupal to deploy and all that kind of stuff. But for people on your teams who might be involved in maintaining projects, there are changes coming up to way, the way that you push code uh, to Drupal uh, for both full projects and sandbox projects. I don't want to go into all the details because I think it would get lost in a webinar format, but you can go to this URL to get more information. We've also included information in the latest what's new on Drupal.org post and in an email to all of the project maintainers that went out yesterday. So hopefully anyone on your team is already aware of this but I wanted to make sure that it's there as well. So there's no disruption to your workflows when we make some changes to Drupal.org's tooling, which is coming up soon. We're gonna have a big announcement uh, about that uh, possibly as soon as the end of this week or early next week um, about some upcoming changes that are gonna enable new collaboration features um, like inline code editing directly from a web UI, uh, code review tools that are uh, significantly improved over what we have and merge requests. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. We talked about it a little bit in Nashville, and the team has been working hard um, to, to get that going. So keep an eye out for an announcement coming soon. Um, the other thing that you may have seen going on in the last couple of months is we've been continuing to accelerate the uh, Drupal industry pages, Drupal solution pages. This is part of less the contribution side, but more the adoption side of our work, where we want to uh, promote the uh, tremendous stories and success stories of uh, end user organizations in specific industries or specific areas. So um, we, when we initially launched this, we only had content for higher ed, media and publishing, and government. But since then, we've added healthcare and nonprofit, e-commerce and high tech content. Um, the two uh, latest in this quarter being the e-commerce e and high tech. Um, if you go to the next slide, Megan, uh, the e-commerce page just focuses on um, uh, all of the uh, commerce integrations that are available for Drupal, the ways that customers can take advantage of that. And next slide highlights uh, a few of the like powerful stories. Um, for example, the Z Kung Fu uh, that is one of the largest uh, food chains in all of China and it uses Drupal as the basis of its payment and uh, point of sale systems. So that's something that for a lot of us in the Western world, I think we may not have been aware of, but it's, it's huge. It's huge for Drupal and it's a story that we wanted to get out there. And there are a number of other stories as well. Um, 
uh, and uh, we're really excited about promoting them. And most of these stories come from uh, you, our supporting partners, uh, in various forms. And if you're interested in highlighting a story in one of these areas or in another one of the uh, another industry that perhaps we don't have a page for yet, um, you should talk to your account managers and they can help you learn how to promote um, some of the tremendous work that you do as and at the same time help us promote Drupal to uh, the evaluator audience. Um, so in addition to that, we added this uh, Drupal and high tech page. This is kind of it's less an industry and more a collection of um, a sort of high tech organizations that are known to depend on Drupal. So um, one of the things that I like to say is that um, uh, people, the people who really would know um, the, you know, the, the most technical um, uh, users out there in the marketplace who could potentially sort of build solutions themselves, many of those organizations choose Drupal for what Drupal can do in the content management space. And we really wanted to highlight that. Um, so there's organizations like Red Hat and Cisco and Tesla that are all built on Drupal. Great stories for us to tell. And in addition to that, on the next slide, we have, again, other stories from uh, partners in our ecosystem, um, uh, like the Weather Channel built by Media Current and Sregen's Find It uh, website that we're now highlighting as well. Um, so those are just a few of the things that we're doing to promote uh, uh, adoption and stories about the success of Drupal in the marketplace and a few of the latest ones that uh, I wanted to uh, talk about and let you all know about. Um, the next improvement we've made um, is to the, oh, and it's a little blurry, I'm afraid, sorry about that. Um, we've updated the strategic initiatives page on drupal.org. A, a long-term uh, issue in the past has been that it's been difficult for um, an outsider to Drupal or even someone who's kind of inside, but maybe not in kind of the inner circle of Drupal contributors to understand what are the next uh, initiatives and what are the upcoming features and what's the roadmap of Drupal moving forward. Um, so we've put together some tools for the initiative maintainers um, uh, to manage what's going on. Um, if we look at the next slide, this is an example of what one of these initiative pages looks like. This is for the admin UI and JavaScript modernization initiative, which has been part of bringing um, uh, a robust modern JavaScript uh, interaction layer, first to the administrative side of Drupal, but then potentially eventually to the front end as well. And so these pages have content that sort of summarizes what the initiative is, can include surveys for, for the initiative leads to understand what direction the market wants to see these initiatives go to. And next slide also includes um, a quick summary of what they're working on, the initiative roadmap, and who's participating and how you can contact them and get involved uh, to participate as well. So we think that's really useful. Um, and if you go to the next slide, Megan, yeah, finally, it will also include these, how can you help? So if anyone has teams that are, um, you can go to drupal.org slash initiatives to get right there to the list of all of the current initiatives that are in flight. Um, and you can find at any of these landing pages, how to get involved in something that um, might be, perhaps it's important to your clients, perhaps it's uh, important to uh, your teams, areas that they would like to contribute, and this is a great place to look to find those uh, areas of contribution. Um, some other changes that we've made over the course of the past quarter, there were obviously some big security releases for Drupal uh, in this last year, and so we've made a few updates just to make it, um, uh, these are sort of quality of life improvements to make it easier to find information about security releases as they happen. So public uh, service announcements and security advisories are now included in the general news feed, so they're going to be there if you're if uh, users are not following everywhere else. Uh, security advisories can now contain multiple CVEs. So if multiple vulnerabilities are fixed in a single release, it's easier for us to uh, track that in a programmatic way. Um, and we have a better unique identifier in our API uh, for each security advisory. This is important because there's some upcoming changes to uh, that core is doing to the security support uh, cycle for Drupal. They want to support a version further back than just the most recent version with security releases. And that's going to mean that we need to be able to programmatically understand two versions back when vulnerabilities were fixed, what's secure and things like that. And these features will help us do that. Um, we also, as you may have seen uh, in email communication and on the site, uh, we had to focus on our GDPR compliance um, when GDPR took effect in May. Um, fortunately, this was a really successful uh, effort internally for the team. It's perhaps not the most, doesn't have the most curb appeal of any initiative that we might be working on, but 
fortunately, Drupal.org, um, even starting when it was built primarily by volunteers, has always been privacy focused in terms of how we treat our user data, has always been opt in rather than opt out oriented. So our compliance is relatively simple. Um, and um, we're really just happy that we were able to uh, put that out well and set a good example. Um, if you're curious about this, because you maybe missed any of the, uh, the details, there's an announcement about it on the association blog. And there were updates to our terms of service, our digital advertising policy, um, our get access policy, and all of those things. Um, another small feature, but that's uh, particularly relevant to you as our supporting partners, um, we now display all of the historical contribution credits. You may have seen on your organization profiles that it showed the last three months, which is the data that we use when calculating marketplace position. But we know that for a lot of companies, they want to be able to see the sort of their complete history of contribution. And that, that's even become important for um, contracts in certain spaces. I've had people tell me about um, uh, having a contract requirement that specifically requested the organization's contribution history for uh, a government contract in India, I think it was. Um, so um, there's a lot of interesting uh, data to be had there. And just to make that more accessible to you, we made it possible for you to see all your historical contribution data. Um, finally, there's a uh, core initiative that is kind of a combination of a Drupal Association initiative and a Drupal core initiative. And it's um, uh, one, of our, one of the early examples of us doing a much closer collaboration than, than we've perhaps done in the past. And this is to improve Core's relationship with Composer. As many of you know, Composer is a key part of um, modern workflows for deploying Drupal sites uh, in Drupal 8. Um, and especially if you have clients who have a large volume of sites or you're, you're managing um, kind of alternatives to the multi-site arrangement, or you're just trying to manage kind of complex code bases across a lot of installations, it can be a really big deal. Um, and so um, the first round of work to make Drupal support Composer at all was actually sponsored by end user organizations. And we've put together a proposal for a second round of work that will, um, uh, that will further enhance the way that Composer is used by Core. It'll kind of make it the default interaction model. And that'll lay the groundwork for future initiatives like automatic updates, like perhaps a project browser built straight into Core, a number of other features that the community has been asking for for a long time. Um, and those are the big highlights. If there's any questions about uh, the Drupal.org updates or any of uh, Megan's updates, please feel free to drop them in the chat and I will call them out. Um, and thank you very much for your time. Megan, I'll hand it back to you. All right, well, we had a little challenge there trying to unmute me, but thank you, Tim, for that great overview. And thanks everyone for joining the call. And uh, we have, you know, um, so much appreciation for how you support us in so many ways, uh, especially funding Drupal.org and all the work that Tim's team does um, to keep the, the, tool, the tools that you use current and to keep the site up and running with great performance. Um, there's a lot of information that we shared. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Tim and I at any time. And of course, you can reach out to your account manager, um, Delana or Mark. Uh, we're here for you. And um, we look forward to giving more updates over the next couple months. So have a great day. And uh, we look forward to talking soon. We've got one quick question that did come through. Oh, okay. This is from, this is from Glowhost. Um, with the recent changes to, with GitHub and the page Drupal.org slash get off, how will this affect issue credits for Drupal developers to develop Drupal modules on GitHub? Uh, this was talked about briefly on the 2017 Q1 supporter webcast. Um, that's a good question. So the upcoming changes to tooling, which the, the announcement will talk about this more, uh, will include an integration between Drupal.org and a tooling provider and the current issue credit system will still be in place. So we're going to do multiple phases, uh, a first phase transparently uh, changing our existing get back end, the second phase enabling merge requests, inline editing, web code review, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we'll have sort of that modern tool set. And we would encourage folks to potentially to migrate if they're on other code hosts 
Um, but as part of the third phase, we're considering, you know, can we take anybody who's still at these third party tools and give them a direct integration of some sort. Um, so it uh, credit for third party hosting won't be part of the immediate rollout of this next tooling change. But once it enables us to do that, it'll be something we're looking at as a follow up phase. I hope that answers the question. Great. Thanks. Great. Any other questions out there? Okay. I think that's it. Then this concludes our supporter webcast. Thanks for joining and looking forward to talking to each of you throughout the year. And uh, again, reach out if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone.